We got a uh, yeah. evil baby goose, aka Reese Watkins, joining us here live on the show. Let's get him in. Yeah. What's up? Ooh, <laughs> got the hair and everything, bro. What's going on, Reese Watkins? I just finished training. Just got the sauna, so I'm getting my eyes. Man, yeah. yo, first of all, thank thank you for uh, taking time to join us after training. Um, yeah, man, thank you for having me. And I, you I, at, I, I lost my voice at the fights, so it's still coming back. Uh, yo, me too, man. <laughs> me too, brother. I'm, I'm still on the road to recovery, man. Um, who were you yelling for or against when you were at the <laughs> I lost it when uh, Ron fought Xavier. <laughs> <laughs> so I saw your post. Uh, you had the Raven Simone post watching your uh, opponent get beat up, uh, watching, watching your nemesis get beat up, man. Uh, we'll start right there. You and um, uh, Xavier Horton, I, I, I was at the fight where um, Xavier called you out after his first fight. Is that where this beef all kind of uh, started? Man, it started because I saw that he was fighting uh, Berto, Roberto Sosa, like on like short notice, right? Berto stepped up on short notice. So we were all joking, like, oh, that dude's soft as hell, which he is, you know, like, <laughs> a matter of fact, if you say, like him saying he's nice, to my intelligence, right? You know, and uh, so I'm like, oh, you're saucy. It's not like it's a super big deal right now. Like, y'all don't test, the commission doesn't test. So it's like, oh, well, you know, fuck it. So he took it to heart. He was on my DM, uh, DMs, messaged me, and shit. I'm like, okay. So I grew up like a younger sibling, so I'm good at annoying people, right? This is what we do. So he took it to heart, and you know, he gets his one little win, and he's like, Reese Watkins, fuck you all that. I'm like, okay, bro, you know, get good, you know. Then we can, then we can fight. So that's just where this all started, you know, and he, he just take everything so personal. I don't know how you're in the wrong damn sport for that shit, but, you know, you want to take shit personal, you fuck around and find out. And he fought around, uh, Ron, and he fucked around and he found out. So it is what it is. Indeed, uh, he 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 did f around and he did find out. Um, <laughs> that was very important. I didn't but, uh, bro, no, 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 no. I choose not to cuss on the show. My orders oh. around. Um, you can say whatever you want to say. This is NFC now, a safe space for fighters to express <laughs> the way that they feel. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, Reese Watkins joining us here on NFC now. Uh, following a, um, let's just say a. Um, what do they say, Kanye? A Twitter rant. Not a Twitter rant, but like, you know, your evil baby goose page, man, is 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 really Instagram gold for me. I could stroll through there. I was strolling through last night at like 3 a.m. and I saw you just really just went in on calling people out. To me, you were poking people in the chest. You were just like, hey, like, yeah, I man. like I want you to fight. Like, you're not gonna do anything, you're not gonna do anything. You called another fighter's typology mm -hmm. page picture, the ugliest thing you've ever seen in your life. You you were you were just you were just literally just going off last night could you explain the why behind that so when i fought in b2 you know i had like six seven different promotions hit me up the week after you know and i was injured I had some stuff going on so you know i got back from the injury in like december uh and i was like okay i want to fight and all these promotions that hit me up they're like oh we're looking oh we don't have oh i can't think of anywhere right now you know i just was being easy on my part i wasn't up enough wasn't on the ass about that so, you know, finally, I just like, I was like, yo, to hell with this. I was just, I'll do it. It's not going to shade to anyone that, you know, that that runs a promotion. Like, it's not shade, shade to y'all. Y'all have a lot of shit to do. But I'm like, word, I can go find my own matchups. So I was on Topology for like a good 90 minutes. And I was just looking at names, you know, if they met a certain criteria, had a certain number of fights, trained at a certain gym or whatever. I just I put it in a shared album, shared album to share with me and my coaches. And I just wrote down this list of names. I'm like, boom, 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 boom. That match profiles with names. If I could contact the person directly, I'll contact them or their coach. If I couldn't find it, like the best way to contact them or couldn't get, a, get in contact with them, I'm like, where? I'm just going to poke at you to try to get a response. So someone, so, you know, someone hopefully will see this and send it to them like, oh, yo, this dumbass is talking shit about you. So hopefully gain a response out of that. It wasn't even, it wasn't like, oh, I'm going to be the next Conor McGregor. It's like, yo, my career is stagnant. And I'm trying to get the leg work in, go through topology, 
go to the back because, you know, go to the end of the rankings because I'm trying to make a pro debut. Can't just jump right to the front and just go through the list and just wrote, just wrote down the I didn't, I didn't keep up with all the comments, and, and, and I appreciate you doing that. I actually like it. It makes my job and Jesse's a little bit easier. But did any of those guys reply to you in any positive ways? Uh, I, a couple. I, didn't check I had up one on dude out of, out of Goat Shed. I, uh, I, got, I got in contact with him directly and because uh, I know his opponent pulled out, his last opponent pulled out day of the fight. Um, and he was struggling to find an opponent. So I'm like, yo, bro, let's just fight. Uh, no bullshit, no beef. Just you can't find a fight. I can't find a fight. Boom. And, you know, he was like, word, let's just make it happen. And, you know, I'm, I'm working on that right now. Uh, we're going to hit up a bunch of promotions for that. But all of that was just, man, I forgot. What, <laughs> I forgot. What, what was the question? I, was I asked you if that you had any luck with that post and any oh, of those yeah, guys yeah, replied yeah. to you. I got a I got a response from Brendan Erickson, um, but apparently he moved back to a fifty five now. So whatever. Um, uh, I Zach Cooper. I saw that he fought at welterweight like once or twice. I didn't, you know, it's like whatever. Just throw your name on here for shits and giggles. Um, uh, I didn't get a response from Warren Smith. I didn't get a response from Perry, but uh, a couple of a couple of them I was able to contact directly. And I, I'm like in kind of like semi contact with them. So I will say after we posted that you were on the podcast, I got a call about 30 minutes after I posted it um, from one guy that said that you called him out before and uh, he would respectfully like to accept your call out. And that was uh, Lewis Brewington that called me about 30 minutes ago and said uh, he would be interested. Bro, I was just training with Lewis this morning, dog. <laughs> He called me like 30 minutes ago. He said he would respectfully accept your uh, call out for months ago. I would too, but that's out of my hands because he trains with, he comes, he comes through. So he trains with so many people up here. I asked him about that, how it happened. I don't he know. just told me at the fight last week he wanted to train. He wanted to fight anyone from AT team or, or the, all the other gyms that he trained yeah. at. So I said, you just told me that Friday. <laughs> He said he'd just avoid Lima's it's, gym for the next two yeah, months. It's not even like it's not even like it's another like ATT out the state. You know, like ATT has fought ATT before, or hell, even guys from Coconut Creek have fought each other. But that's a huge gym, so it's not like I'm fighting another guy from a ATT out of state. That is, I see Lewis every couple of weeks, so I'm not sure how that would make things around the gym. And then last time that shit happened with Jared and uh, Doug, that shit was not pretty. So. I'm not so sure that how that would go. So, I mean, I'll have to talk that over and, and see what that's about. I would love that that discussion did take place because I do think that is a, a great fight to have. And just, I, I've, I've been very vocal on this pod about um, how disappointed I am being that a lot of fighters have gone, especially, you know, a fighter like you have gone from X3 and have gone to ATT, which has taken away a lot of matchups from fans of the, of, yeah. of the NXT. Because because people are now cross training now yeah, I mean, to me, that seems like an amazing fight. I yeah. wanted to clarify with you, uh, you, you did hold titles in Muay Thai and MMA at two different weight classes. What weight class are you looking to fight at? One seventy. You're looking to fight at one seventy. Yeah, and one seventy. MMA or, or Muay Thai? What'd you say? Is this MMA or Muay Thai? MMA. I'm done with Muay Thai for. for- okay, so you're fighting at one seventy now. With, a, with with somebody like Lewis Bruin said, I don't know how much y'all are touching each other when you're in training. And, um, like, look, even I, I, after watching Ronald Humphrey fight, Reese, I think you're an amazing fighter. I think you're one of the best fighters in this promotion. Thank you. As I saw Ronald Humphrey's fight, I was like, the only person I could really see even competing with him is somebody like you. But yeah. I understand y'all are both ATT. So you see, yeah, like, you see the frustration yeah, 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 that I get it. from another fan. It's like, yo, their matchups – that are not being had because ATT is such a large gym. I and we're not being able to see that. Can you understand that? Yeah, I feel like with Lewis, I tried to fight him when I was still, you know, with him already uh, when we were at X3. Uh, and he didn't, he didn't accept it or he said, oh, it's, just, it's not a big deal. You know, I was like, it didn't happen. It didn't materialize. I'm not going to get on here and, you know, shit talk Lewis. You know, we're, we're, or I consider, I think we're friends now. You know, we fucking fuck around and all that. He was my one of the main drilling partners I went with this morning. So uh, with that, I just put it behind me. And uh, I had a old coach, uh, Sean Applegate. He told, he he was talking, not forget, I think he told someone, of it. Uh, something he would say, if you can't, don't shit talk people that you can't get a fight with. Um, so once I saw that, like, was it going to materialize? 
I was like, okay, word, you know, just move. I put that aside, just moved on. So I'm, I'm totally cool with Lewis now. I mean, if we just wanted to a fight, I, I'm sure that would be fun uh, with no, no issue. But I'm not sure how that would work out okay. with our, our coaches and all that. I think he's trying to get on our March 10th battery show. He's, he's killing me to get on the March 10th battery <laughs> show. I think he saw your call out. And he said, you know, when he saw you were on the pod today, he called me right away and said, hey, bring this up. He said he called me out before. I would stay away from Lima for the next two months. But he said, I want on the March 10th show. He can't get a fight either. Um, he said, you know, I, I would respectfully do it and be friends with him afterwards. So that was kind of the way he phrased it, phrased it to me when we spoke. Um, <laughs> yeah, la last thing I want to say on that is that I don't think it's worth it right now because, uh, like you saw, who is it? Like uh Rosenstrike and and, and uh, JDS, they fought each other in the UFC, and they both trained at an ATT Coconut Creek. But that makes sense because they're both big names. That was for a lot of money. A lot of money. Right. So, or or Usman and, and Burns, you know, they're good friends, but that was a title fight for a, a ton of money. So there's not really much to gain from that besides bragging rights, you know. Um, and it's not even like for, it's not even worth the experience because, you know, it's pro, so that's your permanent record. So it's not like amateur fucking you go pro, no one cares. So I don't think that fight is a good idea now. But maybe later, you know, just no beef. Just and, and I know you were looking for Ronald Humphreys to beat Xavier. Um, I'm sure yeah. that's the way you were hoping to be. But were you actually disappointed when Ronald dominated the fight as much as he did? Does that no. does that still keep the Xavier fight out there that you want to have one day? If he turns pro, but I'm not staying amateur to fuck around with him. I feel like uh, I feel like I gave him free clout. You know. He, Fucking sucks. He has he's a wrestler with no cardio. That shit is an oxymoron. That doesn't make any goddamn sense. You know? That's doesn't make any fucking sense, bro. So for Ron to go out there and show him, especially Ron's good as shit. His wrestling's great. So it's like there's levels to this shit. Um, don't take shit so personally and then don't call, you know, don't call people out that you know you can't be or at least put on an entertaining fight with. Like, yeah, I, I poke at people, but I know my place in the totem pole. I'm not gonna go out. And be like, ah, oh, give me Jared Gooding. I, I that fight can't even happen, you know. Even if we're all like, I think, you know, even if it is like similar skills, that fight can't happen. The commission won't make that fight, you know. Or I can't be like, oh, oh, give me, you know, this guy who's seven and zero. It's never gonna fucking happen. So I think that I want him to be a little more self aware. I feel like, you know, losing sucks. I I do feel bad for him because he didn't win a second of that fight from bell to bell, you know opened up and ate like three head kicks and to have your family and friends come out and see you just get beat like that is embarrassing and I, I i feel for him you know that that shit is a horrible feeling but i feel like you got to learn to be more self-aware uh learn where you are on the totem pole and, and and work your way up so you're still interested in fighting xavier but only if he goes pro only yeah only if he goes pro i'm not waiting around an amateur you know if he wants to go pro and get stomped sure but I'm not waiting around for him to go win another fight and then me for, um, nah, I'm done. Again, ladies and gentlemen, Reese Watkins joining us here on NFC Now, a.k.a. Evil Baby Goose. Now, just to clarify, yeah. um, what would it take for you to fight Lewis Ruington? Man, a lot of money. Um, a, a, a lot of money. Because it's not worth, it's not worth messing up. I love ATT Lima, man. So it's a great gym. It's not worth messing up that training environment. And I hate it's it's so funny. I hate social confrontation. I'm awkward as hell. It's not worth that awkwardness, that 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 animosity. We can say we're friends, but at the end of the day, I'm trying to put you out. You're trying to put me out. You know, so you're you're gonna feel some type of way about that. It's not worth all that animosity. If you want to fight, bro, we can we can spar the gym, man. Uh, but to put that out there publicly, uh, that's kind of annoying and it, it doesn't, to me, especially for a guy that came from boxing, I, I don't get it. You know, we're both up and coming prospects, both have a lot of, both have a lot of potential. So it's like, why would you jack this up so early? You know, like go, let's both get signed to a big promotion and then fight when we're getting paid, you know, a lot of money. But when we're for, for for what it's worth right now i don't this is worth bragging rights and bragging rights right now is not it's not all that could you see how just after hearing your explanation versus you know you putting out like you're looking for a fight and somebody does call you out how that can kind of like 
you know, turn some heads and kind of like make people just question your. I do. Um, I, do. Um, I get it, man. I get it. It's kind of like hypo uh, hypocrisy, but you can think at the end of the day, you can think whatever the hell you want to to think about me, dog. It's it's. I know what's best for my career. Um, you, these people don't. They don't know the inner workings. They aren't in the gym all day. They don't see what goes on. They don't. And and, and if, if Lewis loses or if I loses, that doesn't affect them. You know, they're like, oh, they talk about it for a bit and then they move on with their boring ass lives. So for, you know, think what you want to think, but that fight just doesn't make sense because I don't be like, oh, I'm looking for a fight. And I'm not like, oh, Michael Fortner, let's fight, bro. Like, no, dog, I train Michael all the time. So that doesn't make any sense. And, you know, I don't, I don't want to get here and slander Lewis, but you know, I'll talk to him after. But it's kind of like, what the hell, man? And it's like, if you, if you are talking about finding people from ATT Team Lima, why are you training up here in the first place? Why? You, um, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I appreciate you giving us that that um, context because again, we're not in those training rooms and we don't know who's training where all the time. And you know, I know there's a lot of cross training going on here in the, on the uh, on the local level. And so, and, again, it does make things very cloudy for the fan who wants to see some of these fights take place, and we can't see them because there's, from what you're explaining, there's just politics in this. Like, if, if you touch people in the training room, you probably don't want to touch them outside because it's going to make things awkward, and we understand that. And yeah. it's funny seeing the comments come in online because it looks like this. Uh, this is Lewis Brington with a different screen name. and said, Reese, I love you. This Lewis. Uh, fuck you, Reese Watkins. That's uh, Xavier there. <laughs> <laughs> um, Louis also loves me, and then Louise also loves Julian, also known yeah, as Julian. Like, but, exactly. uh, <laughs> I, I caught out uh, for real briefly, I caught out Lathan Lawson, and I didn't do my due diligence. I didn't see that he he and his coach and his teammates trained with us a lot. And thank God it was late at night, and I woke up early in the morning. and Nathan texted me, he's like, Yo, he trains with us. So I took it down. I'm like, Shit, my bad. I messaged his coach, I apologized. I'm like, Y'all didn't know, it's my fault. Uh, I'm like that's that's on me. I didn't know that our gyms are so intertwined. You know, I was just looking at rankings. I didn't. I got lazy at the end and I was like, uh, whatever. This guy such and such record, but I didn't do that due diligence to see who he trains with. Um, oh, yeah. he's like, oh yeah, teammates with his, uh, Lindsay. I'm like, yeah, I train these guys all the time. So I don't. Uh, inner gym fights like that doesn't make sense right now. Now, how has how much has that changed with you making the switch from X3 Sports now going to ATT Lima? Like you're like you having to be aware of who's training where because you know back in the day it was X3 TV. You can't turn it off, and you no know, turning off X3 TV. And y'all were able to get fights with ATT Atlanta, ATT Team Lima. And like now that you're with ATT Team Lima, like how has that changed the like you know your prospects? Because it seems like you are actually out here actively looking for a fight, but you're having issues finding one. Um, I feel like it's not as big of an issue because back at X3, you know, I would have fought a guy from another X3 location because I only really trained at Emmett and I, I had my own little team. So I would have fought a guy from another location because we didn't, X3 was weird. X3 had teams, there was team X3 and then they're like sub teams. And a lot of times the sub teams didn't cross train, right? So I would have fought another guy from another X3. I'm like, I barely see you, whatever. You know, now but that was that amateur local shows. I was really just doing the NFC, so you know, amateur. That's that's in the area. But now making my pro debut, I feel like it's not much of an issue because pro debut, you know, that's when people start coming from out of state. Uh, so I feel like it's not as much of an issue, even though it's a big gym because uh, I'm in a bigger pond now. So before I was in a little pond. Now I'm in a bigger pond, you know. I'm, um, it's it's a much bigger scope of, of of prospects, so I don't feel like this has much of an issue right now. Indeed. Again, ladies and gentlemen, Reese Watkins joining us here on NFC Now Show Number Seventeen. We've got David Oblas on the line. Now you, uh, uh, Travell Miller came back and uh, snapped back at you this morning, very early in the morning. Um, <laughs> commented on your your body type. He commented on just you. And um, there was a there's a whole thread that went on. Your uh, response to Travell Miller here on NFC now. Um, dog, like if I'm just speaking like straight to Travell, it's like, bro, what the hell are you doing, man? You're you're two three weight classes below me. 
uh, I get that you're from Detroit, you know, don't have shit, including LG, can't have shit in Detroit. But it's like, bro, we're not even remotely close in weight or skill or how we may be close in record, but it's because the dudes he's fought, except for TJ and then that last dude from ATC Atlanta, have been fucking ass, have been horrible. So it's like, bro, we aren't even in the same skill level, dog. And it sucks because... Terrell, like, I like his team. I like AJ, his coaches. They're, they're nice people. They're all just super. When I was first learning, Terrell would come through uh, X2 when we had open sparrings on Friday and Saturday. His coaches were always super nice to me. AJ, always super nice. AJ could have, like, beat the shit. He probably still can't beat the shit out of me. Being, but he never did. He just let me work, you know? So it's like, dog, what the hell, bro? You, you're over here mad because I said you're dodging Nathan. All I'm trying to do is just get Nathan a fight. That's it. It's not personal. I'm just like, oh. Uh, you know, get Nathan a fight. That's it. he took it all personal, and I call out. Shit was funny, but it was ass. It was stupid. If you make a funny joke within the wrong context, that shit's ass. It fucking sucks. You know. So like, if you make a nine eleven joke at a nine eleven memorial, shit's funny, but not there. Learn the context. Read the goddamn room. So it's like, what the what the hell are you doing, bro? It's just it's it's so idiotic. I was speechless for a long time this morning. I didn't even know how to respond. I wrote like five different comments. I was like, I, I don't even know what to say. I want to give him this long, drawn-out explanation, but, like, it's not worth my goddamn time. Bro, I have a dude who we used to train with, uh, the Serbian kickboxer dude, he's that same, or Killcliffe now. He's like, what the f***? I'm like, it's not even worth my time because that's a camp for me, risk injury, muddy and gas to drive up to the gym, all to beat some, all to fight some dude I'll knock out in 90 seconds. Like, what? Uh, Travel, he's not good. All he has is a right, he can crack. He has a right hand. Give him that, but he's not good. He's stiff. He he stands there. He's wild. He throws this Superman spinning shit, and he fucking sucks. At it. I just don't get it. So it's like, stay in your league, dog. TJ beat the shit out you, and, and you're trying to fight me. I'm I'm bigger than TJ, and we have similar brawling style, man. It's like, so that shit was so idiotic. I, I'm still like, I, that's what he said about me stuttering. That shit's true, but I started when I see stupid shit. So you induce the stupid shit. So I, I don't even, I can't even form a coherent thought because it is so subpar. Like that man had to have at least a three to one student teacher ratio or teacher student ratio in school. I, I, I don't get it. <laughs> it is so idiotic. I, I'm, I'm just, it's not worth my time. So I think I think you know, within those comment within that thread, a fight may have been made. Him versus Giovanni. I know you trained with Giovanni at the um, at, at, at the AT and T. Giovanni just came off of a very impressive win over Drew Ball this past weekend. So I think that uh, that might come of it. And um, I know that 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 sparked a lot of things. And we wanted to have you come on just to kind of speak your piece about what you've been seeing, how you've been struggling to get a fight. So. Just in, 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 in all, how soon are you looking to compete, Reese? Uh, I may have something lined up in March on Fight Pass, um, or I may try to get something. I mean, I'm, I'm going to send Jesse uh, some names and some matchups for March 10th at the Battery, but March, I'm trying to get on for March. March, April at the latest, or yeah, March, April at the latest. So, soon, soon. Been David, too long. I'm going to ask you this question, Dave. Um, how intriguing would it be to to not only just the fans but to the ticket sales to have a Reese Watkins on that March 10th card? Um, well, the challenge is right now we're at 18 fights on that card, so we weren't really going to add more. Lewis has been bugging me for two weeks because he lives in the Smyrna area. He trains in the news gym over there. He'd been bugging me for two weeks. I saw him again Friday. Uh, he bugged me again in the venue. Um, so I told Jesse last week, if you can find someone for Lewis, go ahead and do it. That'll put us at 19. 19 is going to drop down to 15 or 16 more than likely, maybe even 14. Um, so it, it, to be 100% honest, it would be tough to add Reese to that card without adding Lewis to the card. It'd be he'd jump over Lewis. Um, you know, maybe someone matches up for Reese but doesn't match up for Lewis. I don't know. It just depends on who we get an opponent for, really. Uh, Man, I want to take a second to, like, kind of plug myself for a second. Like, if Lewis can find a fight, great. I'll hop in the next in the next NFC card. But I feel like part of the reason I was so frustrated because I feel like I'm an asset. I I used to – my job used to be social media management, man. So I, I understand so, social media very well. And I have, a, like, a combined audience of, like, 26, 27,000 people. And it's like 
say, you know, you post something with the t- to 22,000 people, half of them may see it for real, you know, half of them may, may read it for real. And then you take a quarter of that and a quarter of that half is going to like it. And then you take a quarter that liked it and you reduce that down to an eighth that will that will take action to go through with it, you know? So it's like, if I have 22,000 people and I, especially with the new, the new pay-per-view system, I have 22,000 people, 15, 14, 12,000 people see it. Um, and then out of that 12,000 people, hell, take it low, like 100, 200, 300 people buy it. That's a lot of money. So I feel like I can, I, I, I bring in people that otherwise wouldn't know about the NFC. Um, because I feel like I have a good, most of my audience is like 79% of my audience is 18 to 34 year old males. That's the main, yeah. main audience. I, I, I don't doubt your ability one bit. I, I, I've seen your ticket sales every time you fight for us. So you've always had strong ticket sales. I don't doubt that one bit. I think we should definitely try to get you on the March 10th show or the April 21st show at the Tannery Row, which is closer to you now. Unfortunately, that is the Jesse Wabel Amateur Series, but I think we've gotten to where Jesse's okay adding one pro fight to that card. So potentially yourself, possibly Josh Kozier in that area. Um, so, yeah, I definitely think we should get you on that card. I 100% agree you have a uh, strong online presence. I wish you wouldn't use that online presence to beat the shit out of me and the awards make what we do. Oh, I'm kidding about that. I love the feedback. You know I like the feedback. Uh, but, but, yeah, you do have a good fan base, and I'm not going to shit on the fan base. And wherever you fight, I'm sure that fan base is going to continue to grow and grow over time. Uh, yeah, man. Um, I just want to – yeah, well, I guess. Lockins, before we part ways today here on NFC Now, man, we want your final thoughts. What do you want to leave the entire NFC community with, as well as David and I? Um, don't take shit so personal. We're <laughs> y'all in the wrong sport to be taking shit so personally. I don't understand how y'all we can we can sit back and watch an NFL game, NFL game, in a NFL NBA where they talk shit to each other all game, and then a cool after. We're in a sport where we can physically fight people, and. MMA is weird, even though it's a combat sport, it has the softest skinned individuals where I've seen. How like fucking water polo players, volleyball players talk more shit and don't get offended. It is not that fucking deep, bro. It is not that deep. All I'm trying to do is just put my name out there. I, I don't fucking hate anyone. Just don't take shit so personal. Grow a pair, grow some skin, you know, stop being little bitches. And- Grow up. I'll, I'll agree with that, but not as forcefully. I will say this sport has some of the strongest physically people, but when it comes to dealing with them at times, only at times, some of the mentally weakest people at times. So I, I, I second what you say without being as emphatic about it. I agree with you there. <laughs> thank Reece you. Marcus, with that being said, man, thank you for just joining us and being so open and honest and candid about the way that you feel, how you're looking for a fight, um, different fights that are possibly on the table, and uh, how soon you look forward to getting in here. You know you are a uh, an asset to the NFC, an asset to the show, man. Thank you for joining us. We look forward to watching you. Tommy Hoffman. Thank you, guys. Peace.